All right, this is Sergey Belov with Time Valley of Tennis. Uh, before we start the video, please jump to the link below and look at some Amazon links where we're gonna show you all the equipment we use for our videos and uh, rackets, strings, and all that. If you're interested, you can purchase it on that link. Uh, and today's topic is going to be analysis of the back and two-handed backhand stroke. So we're gonna jump into our software and gonna show you in slow motion all the details about appropriate backhand swing. Uh, we're gonna look into biomechanics and some uh, point of contact, appropriate uh, motions and the full work today. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna look at the backhand, two-handed backhand technique. Uh, let's just scroll back for a second. We're gonna look at mainly at general things, right? Because everybody has slightly different technique on the backhand side. Uh, people could have a little bit different grip, they could hold their hand, uh, hands a little bit close together, a little bit apart. Um, but there are general things that everybody should do the same. And uh, we'll start with the slow motion. Let's see how he's getting ready. Very nice back and you see he's turning sideways quite early. Um, getting set up and he's going to swing through the ball with pretty good point of contact. Now, if you're playing one-handed backhand, your point of contact will be a little bit more out front than a two-handed backhand. All right, let's let's roll back for a second and uh, look at it again. I want you to start right here at the split step. Just look at this part right here. As he is moving, look, he's landing with the split step. His left foot already turning a little bit towards his backhand. This happens subconsciously and if you do it that's already great but you can also work on it so sometimes you can make your split step a little bit higher and as you land you're already turning your feet to the side where you're going to be moving which is going to help you to get there quicker obviously now he's getting sideways he's moving towards the ball staying quite low now another thing just just look how quick he turned the ball wasn't even close. This is generally the biggest mistake for a lot of, especially beginners. They wait for the ball to come somewhere in this area already. And when the ball bounces from there and it gets right about here, that's when people try to take their racket back and turn. Then their point of contact almost at the hip level. That's when they make mistakes. But look how early he got set up. He could even move forward step inside of the car and that's her, where the ball is coming look how much time he had to get set up and hit it now look at this swing very nice swing he's dropping his racket down um, right here his racket is going to get down and swing through the ball right here he's generating kinetic energy right there he's, he's he, combining look at the point of contact right in front and uh, you can see if we look at the angle of the racket comparing to the ball right there you can see it's about 10 degrees I would say about 10 degrees so his his point of contact is a little bit on the lower level of the racket if you split it right into right here you can see it's a little bit on the lower level that helps him to roll the racket down a little bit to generate that top spin that's another problem for a lot of uh, beginners they they catch the ball on the top part of the racket and it causes the racket to open up now let's look back just for a second and here's um, actually the next shot let's see one more shot in front of us and see how that's gonna play out now here is actually very interesting let's do a slow motion very quick and I want you to see something look even more extreme turn right there which is amazing because that's basically what Djokovic does or some of the biggest professional players so here he's getting ready, he's split stepping, look at that turn. So he saw the ball was coming a little bit faster to the back inside, he didn't time. But he realized that as he was doing a split step. So he made a turn, turn his shoulder, look at that alignment with the ball. Look at that. 
he's looking straight at the, at the ball right there getting set up moving forward through the ball now let's look at this part right here and we looked at it also on the one-handed backhand as well where he's gonna roll a little bit right there from his heel to his toe to generate that power and transfer his body into the ball very nice he's staying low the ball came a little bit faster and lower so he got set up really well he's gonna recover his racket is coming right over uh, his shoulder on the other side like that very good and now another part of the full work is a recovery step see he's already turning a little bit his head is staying still he's moving back getting back very nice and back to the middle of the court now the most importantly here to look into uh, generating force behind you know how do you transfer your body weight so if you look back the point of contact is one of the most important things if your point of contact too close to you see how you're getting set up boom it's right there in front of him perfect now one handed back and probably the point of contact would be a little bit more in front somewhere in this area but two handed is just perfect right there and he can generate a lot of power he helps with his left hand to pull the racket across his body he's staying very low compact he doesn't have that extra swing or anything which helps him to generate that power and transfer his body weight into the ball all right we're looking at the a reach shot from the front view uh, he's getting set up right now to hit his backhand and we're gonna zoom into the swing itself nice let's pull back just for a second um, let's see right here watch how his swing is very compact on the way back now he drops his wrist down a little bit right there you can see how he drops his swing down the, the sorry his wrist down and brings his racket up now if you look at the whole swing he extends his left arm it's a little bit tucked in a little bit his right arm and left arm which is fine some people have completely straight uh, both of their arms and it depends how relaxed you are in the swing so if you really relax you use your legs a lot and you can see how he goes up on the ball a little bit with his legs at the same time as he swings that's how he generates power but more relaxed you are obviously and look at that point of contact very nice he keeps his head down so one more thing let's point out right there as we're at it is how he keeps his head down and he's watching the ball right there and his head staying down now a lot of times what happens um, the fact that you keep you're keeping your head down after the ball leaves your strings is actually a fact of that the ball leaves your string so fast that your eyes and your head cannot really keep track of it which is fine right so because by the time the ball reaches the service line area of your side or even the net nothing really can happen to the ball your opponent is not going to jump right in front of you and try to pull the ball away it just is as far as you focus on watching the ball at that time on your side and you keeping your eyes on the ball throughout the point of contact your head is going to stay there for a split of a second after the ball's left already because the pace of the ball could have been uh, 80 to 90 miles an hour coming off your uh, racket and it just your eyes cannot really keep track of it that fast and then if you look over you'll see where the ball goes obviously now um, on this side let's look at another back end right here now you can see his grip he is holding um, close to almost continental on his four with his right hand it's a nice nice um, I would say semi western Obviously, his left hand. Uh, the, the the grip changes a little bit uh, depending who you are. You know, on the back end, I believe on the two hand back end, the change is not as dramatic. But so now you can see he's using a lot of close stance because the balls are coming short. Um, you can use open stance. Uh, on open stance, the point of contact could be a little bit closer than 
on the close stance on the close stand you're really working with transferring your body weight into the ball generating kinetic en energy um, depending on how much the racket has speed and how much body weight you put into it that's results in the pace of the ball on the open stance a little closer using centrifugal force just ro rotating over your central line of the ball a lot of people use it nowadays but uh, that's where we at here okay we'll look at um, Aritz's backhand on on the view from behind so we can see how he gets set up moving forward to take the ball early his head stays still Swings through the ball, very nice, great back in right there. So we're gonna look back for a second on that back in. Let's pull back, and we're gonna start again looking at the uh, split step initially when he start before he start moving to the ball. Right here, split. He turns already his feet a little bit, and you can see where the ball is at. Right here. That's where the ball is at. Now he's gonna move forward. The ball's passing the net. His racket is coming back. Bounce. His racket is fully back. Now he start making a loop and swinging forward. And you can see how much inside of the court he is. A lot of players, when they get a short ball, their feet somewhere here behind the baseline. That causes them to make a lot of mistakes. Hit the ball late. A little bit and low he's taking the ball early he could even take it even earlier and completely crush it but uh, you know how much inside he is and if he'll be taking him early he couldn't even come into the net now look at the racket when he's taking his racket back right at this time he doesn't pass his shoulder level here on the side you see his feet aligned and obviously the camera is a little bit with an angle but his rack is always on his side of the body. Now, right at the hip level, he's going to flick his racket back just a little bit. And that's where he engage, engages his hips to hit the ball. You can see very similar on the one-handed back. And when the racket comes down to the hip level, he's going to flick back a little bit. And the hip's going to toss that racket forward, you can see here, to generate an extreme amount of power and I think this is one of the crucial moments especially in modern tennis to generate tremendous amount of power on that backhand uh, two hand backhand